to kick this off, I'd like to uh, invite René Janssen to the stage. Um, he was on uh, national television uh, yesterday uh, on, this, uh, on this matter, so he's, uh, he's already pretty warmed up, <laughs> I, I think, uh, to, to have his uh, talk uh, now. He's uh, chair of the Netherlands Gambi Gambling Authority, and um, let's, uh, let's welcome him uh, to the stage. Thank you very much. René Janssen. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you here all today, in person, no less. I'm honored to have been given the opportunity again to deliver the keynote speech on this conference. And I would like to thank Mr. Willem van Oort, our gaming in Holland, uh, for the invitation he sent to me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the gaming in Holland conferences are always very well planned. On the, second, the 22nd of September last year, lots of us met in person at the stunning Beurs of Berlage, where we were just only able to meet again after another period of heavy restrictions started due to COVID-19. Fortunately, the number of opportunities for gatherings like this have been expanded yet again, and let's hope it will stay that way for a long time. Well. As said, the 1st of October is nearly upon us, the day the legal market for online gambling officially opens. On a personal note, the 1st of October held some significance for me, as it means I will be exactly halfway through my term as chairman of the KSA. Three years ago, on the 1st of October 2018, I started as the chairman of the KSA's executive board. And at that time, if you, were her, if you were to have told me that the legal market for online gambling would be opening on the 1st of October 2021, really, I wouldn't have believed you. After all, when I took office, the Senate of our parliament was poised to debate the draft bill on remote gambling, COA Act. It was an exciting debate from a political perspective, but fortunately the debate and the bill was adopted. Indeed, that happened in February 2019, so that was fairly soon after I took office. However, subsequently it turned out there was needed more time to get to where we are now. There was some, simply so much work still to be done. From the fleshing out of large chunks of secondary legislation by the Ministry, to an opinion from the Council of State, and the final green light from the House of Representatives. And to be fair, the KSA likewise needed more time than I initially expected. Our Preparations and investments had to be ready for license applications for remote gambling and the opening of the online market were and still remain highly intensive and extensive. Moreover, the circumstances around COVID were not exactly helpful in all of this either. However, I certainly don't wish to use that as an excuse. But now the time has really come. At midnight on October 1st, the first license holders may get started. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, 10 license applicants will be informed that their applications were successful. Meaning that as of the 1st of October, they are allowed to provide gambling services on the internet. I said this yesterday, as recalled, at the television program News Europe, and you might probably heard the news already. Of course, I understand that you would like to know who they are, and I'm very sympathetic to that. However, as always, we need to be careful. The announcement will proceed as follows. Tomorrow, we will be announcing to applicants if the license has been granted, 
through the individual digital portal on which the application was submitted. The applicants whose applications have been rejected or whose applications are still pending will then be informed. On our end of the portal, we will receive a notification once the announcement has been read. Only then will we be able to disclose who the license holders are and through which websites and apps they will be providing their products. I'm sure you must be thinking 10 licenses. Weren't there 29 license applications? Yes, they were. That means roughly only one in three were granted at this stage. And yes, that is correct. Those aren't very many yet. However, a certain degree of nuance would be appropriate here. I would like to point out that this is only the beginning of the legalization and regulation of the online market. We are moving into a phased opening of the market. As I said, applications are still pending and we expect to receive a significant number of new applications by April 2022. There will be operators who postponed submitting their applications in connection with the so-called cooling off period as a result of the Postama parliamentary motion. And there probably are operators who waited with submitting an application for the simple reason that they were not yet ready to do so. If you were to ask me about my feelings regarding the small number, the modest number of licenses as of 1st of October, I'd say they were mixed. That ambivalence is mainly due to the fact that the Remote Gambling Act is intended to create a sufficiently attractive legal availability for consumers so that consumers who want to gamble online can do so in a safe environment. And therefore, no longer have to turn to illegal operators, in whose case it is unclear as to whether the game is fair and whether there is sufficient attention for addiction prevention. On the other hand, and herein lies the ambivalence, quality in my view, is more important than quantity. Kanspel Autoriteit is committed to only granting licenses who truly are good enough, who will and truly meet the requirements. And as I have stated previously on several occasions, the number of requirements is considerable. The Netherlands has put in place strict and detailed legislation that makes every effort to allow players who wish to gamble to do so in a safe environment with a strong emphasis on the prevention of gambling addiction. Another aspect with a regard to the relatively small number of licenses from the 1st of October onwards is that this will hopefully mean that the scale of advertisements will be relatively limited this first month. As you are probably aware, I made several petitions in the run-up to the 1st of October for some restraint in that regard and for parties to adopt a responsible attitude, of course with a view to acceptance in our society. So those are some of my feelings in relation to the modest number of licenses to be issued. However, Willem van Oort asked me to spend today focusing on shedding some light on the lessons learned so far in handling applications. And the overarching lesson I would like to share with you today is be very well prepared. You won't be, see, be able to see this, but on my sheet here, I've put a huge exclamation remark at the end of that last sentence. And for good reason, the bar is set high and we assess all elements of the license applications very seriously. The latter can also be interpreted as stringently. I think the proof that lies in the fact 
that of the 29 applica applicants, only 10 have actually been allowed to get started this week. I don't cite the motto, be very well prepared for nothing, as we encountered a substantial number of flaws in the license applications. That is why I say, read the legislation and regulations, the policy rules, study the assessment scheme, attend relevant webinars, and absorb all of the information on our website. Similarly, applicants should take into account that the various connection processes, such as for the data safe and for the central exclusion register, CRUX named, do not happen automatically and they take time. And this is all about preparation time and processing time. Another lesson that operators must take into account is that they will always remain fully responsible, even in cases where they work with subcontractors. It would be a real big mistake to think I've outsourced this and I don't have to worry about it anymore. KSA does business with license applicants only, not with their subcontractors. Furthermore, I think it is critical to provide a complete transparency, particularly with regard to the reliability component. If an operator fails to do so, anti-KSA discovers any dubious antecedents, antecedents, I must say, then they will be close to facing a refusal. Another critical element operators should keep in mind only submit an application if every piece of information that is requested can actually be provided. Incomplete applications will impact the processing time and can even lead to non-consideration. We allowed a phased submission process for the first applications because it was all new to us and the industry and the number of elements, such as the assessment schemes, was still under development. But that was a one-off gesture, and we no longer do that in the future. And I would also like to point out that based on our experiences over the past few months, operators can't ask the KSA for interim or advanced assessment of any submitted documents. And finally, my last piece of advice in this con context is don't make any public statements about the possible forthcoming license. From a supervisory perspective, this can easily be regarded as advertisements for gambling for which no license has yet been granted. And I have no choice but to be tough on these various points, although naturally we will not lose sight of the fairness component of being tough but fair. Those are the lessons we have learned so far and the pieces of advice I would impart to operators for future license applications. The 1st of October marks the dawn of a new age in the history of gambling in our country. I've said it before and I'll say it again. A vital part of the success of the Act depends on the extent to which the KSA succeeds in banning illegal operators. And I define success as being able to lead or channel as many as eight and ultimately nine of ten players from illegal to legitimate operators. So how do we intend to tackle those illegal operators from now on? As may you have heard already, we have revised our penalty policy with effect from the 1st of October. A legitimate online gambling market means heavy fines for illegal operators. Operators with a turnover of less than 50 million euros will pay a basic fine of 600,000 euros, which can be increased in the event of any additional aggravating circumstances. Those could include targeting young people, 
or the absence of information about addiction prevention. Operators with a turnover of more than 15 million euros will receive a basic fine of 4% of their turnover, which will be uh, estimated if necessary. We will also uh, be applying the same aggravating circumstances to those types of fines. I don't think I need to do some of the mathematics right now for you to understand that this new penalty policy means serious money indeed. Moving on with a few words to the criteria for enforcement action after the 1st of November. Even under the new conditions, there will still be a greater supply of illegal gambling opportunities than our KSA's capacity to uh, handle all the cases. That is why still choices have to be made. Safe gambling is a common thread that runs through our approach. Dutch consumers who want to gamble must be able to do so in a safe environment. This means considering our public objectives. Is the gambling offering harmful to consumers? Is there a risk of developing gambling addiction? And are there criminal or illegal elements? The other leading criterion in the prioritization of the approach to illegal operators from 1st November onwards is the size of the market share. In other words, the number of Dutch players served by an illegal operator. It can't be the case that where legal operators exist, at the same time, illegal operators still operate with a substantial share of the Dutch market. A key pillar of our safer gambling mission is to ensure a fair market. And we are asking a lot from licensees, such as their connection to the central exclusion register, and we place strict requirements on the range of gambling and offer. For example, betting on the first yellow or red card in a football match is not permitted in the Netherlands under the new rules. Then there's the data safe that operators are required to set up, from which they are required to report to the KSA. On top of all of that, there's all the time, money and effort that goes into obtaining a license. As such, it can be the case that the Dutch market includes operators who have not had to do all of that. I therefore would like to use this stage here today to ask operators who may want to apply for a license in future, please keep this in mind. I can well imagine that the operators concerned in this case will ensure that they actively exclude Dutch players while they do not yet have a license. In terms of our enforcement policy, we will certainly not be turning a blind eye when it comes to operators who are considering submitting a license application in future. The price to be paid for this may be that achieving the channeling objective may take a little longer. And let me assure you that we are quite aware of the risks related to these choices. Of course, we would prefer this not to be the case, but if that's the way it is, then we have to accept it. The Minister for Legal Protection, Sander Dekker, expressed his confidence that more intensive enforcement of the actions of operators with a major illegal market share has the potential to act as a catalyst for an accelerated transition of players to a legitimate gambling offering. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to conclude by saying that I stand here today feeling really satisfied and very proud of KSA staff, its efforts and performance. And as such, I'd like to end with a positive note. When it comes to Dutch gambling policy, the 1st of October 2021 is a really historic date. 
the Netherlands is taking a significant step toward a legalized and regulated online gambling infrastructure. It's been a long, a very long journey. But this marks the end of a diligent and conscientious process. I'm convinced that this is the best way forward for consumers. As a regulator, we will do everything we can to provide a safe environment for all players who want to take part in gambling. This involves tough but fair supervision of license holders, as well as ensuring a fair market by tackling illegal operators. And I would like to, to end by expressing my heartfelt congratulations to the still unknown companies that will be informed tomorrow that they have obtained a license. Their achievement is no mean feat, and I realize that the efforts on their part have been considerable. As such, their reward, a license granted by the KSA, is well deserved. Thank you very much for your attention.